the hardest part of fostering is letting them go. People say to us all the time, all the time, I could never foster because I would get too attached. Well, that's the point. When our daughter was in ninth grade, her school went to Miracle Hill Children's Home for a class trip. She came home and she was just crying. And she said, we've got to foster. And we kind of put her off again because we were older and she kept at us for a couple years. And we finally made a deal with her and he said, Abby, if you can make a B in biology, we'll talk to Miracle Hill about fostering. Well, she kept her end of the bargain. And before long, we were licensed and waiting for our first phone call. I'll never forget those first two little girls. They were taken out of a meth home. They could not come with anything that was familiar to them. They come in and they may be covered in bruises. And sometimes you don't know what is going to trigger trauma for them. I remember one little girl, we walked into the YMCA and she fell apart. It came out of nowhere. We had no idea that by walking into the YMCA, we were triggering something for her. Foster care is hard, very hard. We're talking about children who are coming from neglectful situations. So we think of lack of, lack of food, lack of power, of water. We think of abuse and we think more of harm done to a child. They're not able to verbalize those internal feelings and so it comes out in their behavior. You know, and sometimes they come in and they don't want you to love them. That, that can be uh, challenging and especially when you do all that you can do to love them and they're still not responding. They're afraid of that love. If they love you, it's gonna get taken away because anything that's been important to them has been taken away. But at the same time, it blows us away how resilient they can be. They can turn very quickly from sad little children into happy-go-lucky, carefree, running, laughing. One thing that foster care has taught me is the sovereignty of God, that He does have a plan. It may not be my plan, but it's a better plan. Over the seven and a half years that we fostered, we were able to have 21 children in our home. And then it became obvious that that season was coming to a close. God opened up the opportunity for me to begin working as a foster care coordinator at Miracle Hill. And then I get the opportunity because I'm a teacher, an undergrad and grad, I get to encourage them to consider fostering. I get to share their heartbreak when children leave. I understand that. I'm thankful that God has allowed me to be in foster care even though we don't currently have foster children in our home. You have to deny yourself. There's going to be grief and loss because the whole point of foster care is reunification. So that whether that be with their biological family, whether that be with kinship care or in adoptive setting, the idea is that they're going to leave. You can't pour out unconditional love and not be devastated when they leave. It's taking a piece of you with them by far. That is the hardest part of foster care. But their need is far greater than any pain or heartbreak you experience at that point. Foster parents aren't these super people that somehow we don't get attached, so that's why we can do this. You absolutely do get attached, and you should get attached. So that's how you're gonna impact them.